and welcome back to another one of my videos. Today we're going to be making the starburst, or as I like to call it, the sunflower granny square. It's going to be pretty fun. If you followed my last video, you can make this one. It's going to be a circle in the middle, some cluster starburst petals in the middle, some little bit longer ones, and then we're going to start squaring it off so it fits into your blanket. So grab your hooks and let's go. Today I'll be using a four weight yarn. Um, it's pretty standard weight. Um, I'll also be using a five millimeter crochet hook. You'll also need a darning needle, um, plastic, metal, whatever works. As long as it's a large needle, you can easily thread thick yarn through. And some scissors. You don't need cute little scissors like this. You can use any scissors, but they're kind of fun. So let's begin. So to start off, we're going to be needing to do a slip stitch so we can get our yarn onto our hook. We're going to take our ends here, our working yarn on our other hand, and we are going to take our finger, push it on through with me, and grab your other side, and do a little twirl. Stick your thumb in there, and grab your working yarn, holding the tail and the working yarn, cinch it on up. Grab your hook, place it on, and you're ready to start. So for this, we're going to be making a basic circle so that we can do our starburst. So we're going to yarn over, pull through, and do a chain. We're going to do five chains. So yarn over, hook down, pull through, chain two, chain three, chain four, and chain five. And with just our chains on our hook, we're going to push on through that very first chain. Yarn over, careful the tail, hold your side, hold this still, pull your yarn through both loops. And there you have your little circle. So to start off this circle, we're going to be chaining three as a mock double crochet. So just like before, one, yarn over, two, yarn over, three. All right. So we're going to yarn over, come on through. So you should have your chain three yarn here, the one you just made and looped over. And now we're grabbing the yarn from the other side and pulling it through our big loop. You should have something that looks like this. So we're going to yarn over again, pulling our hook down the two loops we're going to pull through. And then we're going to yarn over one more time, holding everything together, and pull through those two loops. So you have your first double crochet. We're going to be making a total of having 16 double crochets around here, including your mock three chain. So let's do that. Go over. Round, first two loops, second loop, so that's three, over, down, round, through, over, through, around, down, bring on back, through, keep going, doing great. This is your first time holding yarn or dealing with it, you're going to go much slower. And that's totally fine. You want to get your technique down and you want to do it to where it becomes muscle memory. All the good crocheters and people you see on YouTube or maybe even your own grandmother, they started off very, very slow. And so will you. Until you get the muscle memory, bringing it all back. If you didn't see what I just did there, I'm realizing I'm running out of space in this chain. You can grab that last double crochet right here and pull it on back 
it's pretty durable so you can work like that go around through grab it come back one two three yarn over pull through the first two yarn over pull through the second two and just keep going you want 16 in total and that includes the chain three that chain three that you did in the beginning counts as your first double crochet for the starburst granny square this particular pattern it's a pretty universal pattern um, the magic numbers are 16 7 and 5 so we're starting off with our 16 right now so if you lost count it's always good to stop this is our tail just ignore it so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so you have ten and if you're getting too clustered to where you can't really see what you're doing you go ahead and grab that last one not the first one but the last one and cinch it on back around go through grab your working yarn pull back through the first two yarn over through the second two good Keep going you're doing great over around and back over so around first two second two and over through the hole grab your yarn good one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen see i'm getting clustered right here there's no room i don't want to you don't want to start crocheting onto that second but because you want to have that for later to know where you are let's go ahead and pull it on back make yourself a little more room Make sure you're getting that tail out of the way with your fingers as you go. There. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. We got our sixteen. So now looking closely, we're gonna see our first hook, our second, and our third. Right here in this third, you're gonna wanna jump into, hook over. So do you see what I did? And we'll go back. So one, two, three. That's where we wanna go into. Yeah, we yarn over, and with your hook down, go through both loops, tying it on it. So we're gonna change colors now. Make sure you tie off enough to thread in. So I'd say about that much, just a bit. Don't need a ton. You don't want to waste a bunch of this color either. No, if you, as long as we slip stitch into the other one, you're good to pull it out. Okay, set your needle hook aside. Kind of give it a little stretch and get your darning needle. So. What we're going to do here is thread this end stitch back into the circle, hiding it and giving it a little extra security. So this is where it just came from. You can see that just fine. See how it comes up? This very next loop right here. So we got this right here. This very next loop. You're going to go through both. Pull it on through. You're not going to pull tight. You're just going to pull firmly enough to where it goes and so and then the loops right before that so this is where it was you just loop through here this is the back right over give it a little nudge and then the first loops down here just gonna kind of get in the middle you don't want to go all the way to the other side pull through Okay. 
and then go ahead and start threading through the middle of your starting stitch. My darning needle is catching on this yarn very badly. That's okay. Make sure not to get your tail on there because you're going to throw that on the whole other side. Okay. And for threading the end piece, I like to do a complete revolution around the circle. Gives it a little more buff of yarn there, so it makes the circle pop. And it also adds a layer of security. So right in this middle, right where you were threading all that into and making your 16, that's what you're going to pull through. Here I just want to do one revolution. Oops, had to pull everything. Make it look nice. Hiding your tail is one of the more tedious jobs to doing these, if you're, especially if you're changing colors a lot, but it's totally worth it. Makes your blanket last longer. Makes your circle pop and it adds a little more security to your well-being as well. So I'm going to go ahead and grab our scissors and very carefully and closely snip that off. Add that to the discarded yarn pile. Then we're going to go ahead and flip, grab it, our darning needle, put the yarn through, and go back up just one and bring it in on it. trick is to not go all the way through just to the middle start threading that through securing that tail these granny squares are pretty durable and they're gonna get stretched as you use your blanket or your sweater or hat or cardigan whatever That's threaded enough. You should end up with a lovely little flower. Okay. So we're going to switch to yellow. See if I can grab it out without disrupting the whole pile. So we're going to go ahead and slip stitch this on here. So just like before, circle, round about, get your thumb through, grab and pull. And now we're going to start our starbursts. Okay, ready? So we're going to have to go inside. All we have is our yarn on the hook. Loop it around, bring it on through. So for this one, we're going to secure our yarn in, go through both loops. So it has a nice fold on there as a brand new color. So we're going to yarn over, go through that exact same hole you just went through, bring this on back. And again, yarn over through that same hole Grab a yarn and bring it on back. One, two, three, four, five. Yarn over. Go through that same hole. Grab your yarn. You should have seven on your hook now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you can do kind of like a scrunchy up thing holding on to your thing. Yarn over. Turn your hook down with that new yarn on and pull all the way through 
This might be tricky, especially with the different types of weight of yarn you could be using. Um, there we go, got it to come through. So each time you do a bubble stitch or a pop, you're gonna have to secure it with a chain one, at very least. Once you start getting some more, more in size, you're gonna get different chains for different sizes, different patterns, but for this one in particular, it's just one. So just like before, we're gonna go through, grab our thing, round, and go through. Round, circle, so the same one until we have seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I like to do a little twisty thing, kind of helps me out. Yarn over, pull through. There. And just keep going. Just keep, keep going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Chain one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I believe this stitch is called the bubble stitch. You can actually incorporate this exact stitch in other things. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Say like a scarf or maybe pretty fun in a hat just to add a little bit of texture as it looks pretty thick here. But then you flip it over, bumps out. Okay, yarn over, go to your next one, through. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. You always want to make sure they're exactly the same each time. This one's being tricky. There we go. So it makes the same bubble, bobble, bumpy, fun flower petal stitch. Make sure your tension's good so you can pull one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you can pull through easily each time. This will get your hands used to holding multiple things of yarn. Make sure your tension's good. I've got to pull mine out right here. Go over, down, and around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pull around and pull through. And then do a chain one. Okay. Yarn over, do the hole, over and around. Keep going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oops. Start having something that looks like this. All right, yarn over, through, and around. Keep going, yarn over. Six, seven. Good. So here's a good spot to kind of check on your math and make sure you're doing okay. You're going to need 16 of these little bobble stitches in order to make this pattern. 
So far we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So there's a little carfuncle here, maybe with the ending that makes it look like it. So we're actually going to skip this little part that looks a little funky. Get a funky part like that, that's okay. Just make sure your math is correct and see where maybe it's something you should skip. Go around, around, go. Keep going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hook. Get the, get the yarn stuck in. There we go. Okay. So we're going to go around. Skip that funky part. For this particular pattern, you're just focusing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the, the key numbers. Which, if you're a number memorizer, this one in particular is a 16, 16, 5, 7. Round over and around. Keep pulling your string. Make sure you have good tension. There's my kitty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and we're going around, over, and around. In, grab that yarn. In, grab that yarn. And go through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. One. Okay, and if you did your math right, you should have one left here. So around in that last hole. Keep going. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pull through and secure. Okay, so you're at the end here. So just like before, you're going to go to the very top, your very last row slip stitch in. It should look like this on this side. If you flip it, it should start popping out. So we're going to secure off. So I'm going to grab some yarn with my scissors and cut. And if you slip stitch in, you should be able to pull on through. Go ahead and grab the darning needle. Start threading it back through itself. So, what I like to do for this one. See how we have like a big petal here? It's like a corner lip here. I just push it in sideways. When you're threading it back in, you don't want to go through a different color below. Unless you have the same color, of course. Because that kind of uh, makes it visible where you did things. You want this to be seamless. You don't want people to guess where you were putting stitches in to hide your yarn. So this one goes through here. Oops. Still pretty close to where we left off, so 
I'll go ahead and get that right back on there. Keep going. This trick to this is to keep it in the middle. You don't want it visible out here, this big line. It wouldn't look so nice. I think the big trick with crochet, what makes it so magical, really, is that people can't really tell where you started, where you began, how you went about doing that. And then it makes it so much fun for when they learn, they're like, oh, okay. I see. Okay. I'm going to go back just once. Okay. I think that's good. I always cut it pretty close, but be careful not to cut too much. That would not be good. So, I don't know if that for you, but for me, usually the last one that I leave off on looks a little funky. Can it zoom in on me correctly? Sorry, I got kitty scratched, but there we go. So, this is probably the last one where I left off on. Looks a little bit funkier than the rest. But, the magic of this particular one, and lots of others, is once you do that next row, all that disappears. So, we're going to go ahead. This is our beginning. Make sure it's nice in the middle. Kind of just weaving that guy right back on through. It doesn't want to go that way. Just wherever it's going to fit, it's not going to come right back out. I mean, you weaved it around a million times, so it's not like it was going to, but just for a little added security, just a quick little weed through makes all the difference. Okay. So for these Star Wars squares, we actually don't do the granny square off rule. We don't keep flipping and going back to forth. We actually stay on just one side. So we get the big puffy stitch going on just one end. So next is going to be a maroon. Let's see if I can grab it. Okay. Okay. So, this one is pretty close to the cluster one, but not as close. So, we have something like this. We're ready to move on. Oops. So, we got our new color. And put that down. And we're going to put our finger in, grab the other side. Tail under your finger, and pull it on. It cinches it. Yeah. All right. So this one is a little bit different. So we're gonna push it on through. Just oops, not like that. Anyway, see how you have the, the spaces. You're gonna do that same thing that you did before. Right into one of these spaces. Grab your yarn. Slip it on secure. You want this to be nice and secure like that. You don't want to pull tight or anything. You don't need to do that. So you're going to go around. Go back to that same hole. Grab that yarn. And then this time, so you have your, your, your cast on one. Your one before the loop. The one after the loop. You're going to yarn over and pull through just than brand new two. So you should have your beginning one and now this one. Okay? And this is going to feel strange when we're going to do it again. Okay? So yarn over. Go back through that loop. Grab that new yarn. Yarn over. And then, so we have the beginning, 
second. These two new ones that we just made, see that? And we're gonna put our hook down and just those two. Okay, now we have three. Yarn over, push your thing through the loop, grab your new yarn. So you have one, two, three, four, five. Yarn over through the two new loops. You have four. Okay. Now you're gonna yarn over, go back through, grab that. Your two new loops until you have one, two, three, four, five going on here. And then you're gonna yarn over, your hook down, wiggle it if you need to, pull it on through. And there's the beginning of your next petal. This time, instead of just one chain to seal it off, you're gonna do two. Chain, chain. So yarn over through your very next one. Right inside, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, go inside, grab your new yarn, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Do a little cinchy cinch, turn your yarn down, and right on through those both. Then you're gonna chain two. Okay, yarn over, go through your next one. One, two, three, pull through two. So essentially you're doing an incompleted double crochet. Oops, we had a little malfunction there. So I'm gonna slip that off. If you get these acrylic yarns, or sometimes even the really nice yarns do this too, they kind of break on you. You just back up. Sometimes you can just keep going, and it you won't. I mean, it's so weaved into itself, you probably wouldn't even notice. But for the sake of this tutorial. We will go about it correctly. And chain two. Sometimes it's good to stretch out your hands, trim your fingers, give them a second to come back to life for you. Okay. And then keep going for your new one. So your magic number on this is five. You want to do this until you have five on your hook. You're going to pull through and do two. So one, two, three, four, five, pull through and two. Okay. Oops. And there's where you get confused with the last one. Okay, one, two, three. Keep going, pull through those two.
big oversized loop here for no reason. Don't know why. Just gonna back up. Things happen. Sometimes it's just for the bus to retrace your steps. What are you gonna make with your granny square? You gonna make one of those cool cardigans or a hat or a scarf? I guess you can make like what 10, 15 granny squares and make a big scarf. That'd be cool. I would totally wear a granny scarf. A granny, a granny square scarf. Just keep going. Just keep going. Your fingers are gonna hurt. This is your first project, which Kudos on you if this is your first project. You jumped into Starburst right away. Okay. Starting to take some shape. See, I started out with a teeny tiny little chain. Now we're going to have a recognizable flower. Okay, so I did one chain, so two. Some reason I find it easier to pull through. Are these five? So I guess you could take this pattern and reverse it. You could do your your big clusters at the end, and then these five almost double crochets as your second row. Do you want to like to change up? how things will look. Um, I just particularly like the smaller bubbles on the inside, just kind of like a gradient to getting bigger. I think it looks really good. Keep going. Just keep going. There. Okay. Oops. <laughs> I goofed. Let's try that again.
There we go. Okay, before you do your last stitch, just make sure everything's good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. We're good. Yarn over, and for your very last one, go ahead and knock that out. Chain two, just like the other ones. You're gonna find your very last one. Lines right up here, and slip stitch in. Alright, so once you finish doing that. Go ahead and flip your yarn. If you slip stitch in, you're good to pull it on through. Okay. Then go ahead and grab yourself your darning needle. And just like before, you're going to work it back in. Let's like I said before, always try for the middle. The middle is the sweet spot where you're not going to notice that it's even there. Okay. Since this has a double crochet through, you know, so many rows, you can actually just back and forth weave yourself in all the way back up to the top, which would secure this in pretty nicely. It's actually a nice bit of string want there. Okay. So you can see we have that working pretty well for ourselves. So since this one's so tight, you just kind of work it in. Ah. Make sure you get every little bit. You don't want a straight piece of yarn going sideways on you. And there's your flower. Looking pretty good. So, we are now going to work on putting the green in. or whatever color you're doing next. So, we have our two. Spin around and grab it through. Magic. So for this, we're gonna square it out. So, on the previous 
episode. Just kidding, I haven't done this episode yet, but my previous version of this. You're going to eventually making shells in different lengths to get a square. So, without further ado, let's get going. So start anywhere. Sometimes I like to just start in weird areas. It's, it's kind of like here the special start and end. So go ahead and go in and so carry your new color in there. Nice. And then chain up one, two, three. Okay. Then you're gonna go around around again and this is called a triple crochet or double triple crochet it's a big one all right so we're gonna go into the circle here so you have one two three already going on right here you're gonna grab that new one so now on this hook you have one two three four okay you're gonna yarn over Pull through just two. So you should have three on your hook now. Yarn over, pull through two more. You should have just two on your hook now. Yarn over, pull through the last two. That is a triple crochet. Double treble crochet. A treble crochet. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yarn over, yarn over, go through, pull. You have one, two, three, four on your hook. Yarn over. Only pull through two of those guys. You should have three on your hook now. Yarn over, pull through the next two. Yarn over, pull through the last two. And there you have your first start of the corner. Now you're going to chain three. Two, three. So you're going to do another, do another. And you get right through that same hole that you started off with the exact same one. We're not moving on yet. We gotta make a full corner here. And go around, pull through two, and over, pull through two, and over, pull through two. Got it. Make sure you have a adequate amount of yarn. Especially with all this treble crochet, treble crochet, gonna need a lot of yarn. Okay. You ready? One, two, one, two, three. And then push it on through, grab that new yarn, yarn over, through two. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two. Okay, yarn over, yarn over, go through that last one, two, two, two. All right, that, my friends, is the beginning of your square, and I see it matches my background really well. Doesn't match me though. Okay, see, here's your square. Squaring it out. So, right here to this next, you got your petal right here. You're gonna yarn over and make yourself a double crochet. Okay, so ready? Yarn over, go through there, grab that yarn. One, two, three. Pull through two. Pull through the last two. Do it again. This is a double crochet. It's pretty much a good medium to what crochet is all about. Okay, so this middle one here. I'm going to yarn over. Through. And we're actually going to hold all that together. Hold through all three. So 
is a half double crochet. Okay. And hold it. Got it? Now, we're just going to repeat this pattern again. So we're going to do yarn over to the next one. Pull through. We're going to do a double crochet. So pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last one. So each shell is going to have three. And the corners are a shell, chain, chain. In this course, we're doing chain, chain, chain. Three chains. Um, because it's a really big circle and we want to make sure everybody is included. Yarn over, yarn over, go inside, here's your next corner. If you did your math right, you ended up with 16 of these little flower petals. You should have the perfect amount to finish this. If you got one less, one more, then not so much. You might have to group them together if you don't really care. It's not super symmetrical, or you might have to start over. Which is a little harder once you've hidden your work. But that's okay. That just means you get a crochet more. Lucky you. So, keep going. holding this away from yourself and underneath the camera you will definitely feel some muscles in your arm working which is fantastic because I have not done anything with those today as you count walking a giant dog it takes you for a walk okay now let's make sure your tension's good Tension, 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 tension. Because if your tension's not good, you're not good. Okay. Here we go. Go through. This is you're gonna be your half double crochet. This one's a really fun one. You can make a giant scarf out of this. Just keep doing these little half double crochets. They are super fun and easy. Now we're going to do the double crochet. So yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. You're only making three. Three is all you do. Okay. Now we're going to yarn over twice, go through, make herself a treble crochet, get herself another square happening. Okay, chain three, one, two, three, which is going to be super weird because the next round we do, we're only going to do two. Going to kind of tame it. Okay, go through. We are making this starburst happen. Okay, one, two, three. Go over, you can do another cro double crochet. Series of three. One, two, three. So a lot of times when you're doing these separating, like you do shell, chain, shell, chain, you don't actually do that with this one. This is the exception to the rule because these little petals are so close together and there's so many of them that there's actually no need to have that space of a chain. It kind of just makes it itself since it's so close kind of works out in your favor okay um yep that looks small so that has to be a half double crochet so this is a double crochet and try to i mean you can easily see how much smaller the half double crochets are to the double crochets and to the treble crochets with the big hole in the middle 
Okay, so we're doing another double crochet. So we yarn over twice, go through the hole, go through two, go through two, go through two, yarn over, go through. Okay. Oop. One, two, three. Make sure your tension is good. Okay. I always like to pull out as many yarn as I can to the side. I really need to get myself one of those little cool little bowls. They got like a little hole in them to where you can thread your yarn through that. And as you tug on your ball of yarn, essentially it rolls around in the bowl. But it's smart for people to have like little cakes of yarn and not big massive acrylic rolls like I have. I don't know where you are buying your yarn, but there's lots of good places to do that. You can actually even, you know, if you're just starting off and seeing if it's for you, you can go to Walmart of all places and usually they have a, an okay craft section. You can Go over there and buy yourself a ball of yarn for like two dollars and so double crochet here half double crochet i mean double crochet yeah and you just get yourself a color to make make something get used to the yarn you don't have to go out to like joann's or ben franklin's or michael's or whatever you know the big the big ones where it's ten twenty dollars a skein of yarn you can just get yourself something economical and give it a give it a good test run because a lot of times with this yarn you're just kind of messing with it to make sure it works my very first blanket was not so great because i wasn't having any tension okay so one two three four we're gonna go up four because our chain on then we went up four, so it's technically four there. You know, we only did three. Haha. <laughs> Smooth it out. Starting to look like something. It's pretty versatile, too. I think you can really give us a nice stretch. Okay, so I'm going to keep doing this color. So I'm going to chain up three, turn my work, and then go ahead and do a double crochet into this exact same. Whole square. Um, what would you say? Tr sort of triangle. Hole. We'll just call it a hole. Okay. And then, just like in this one, we start off. That's where we are right here, actually, in this new one. I'm going to go to each one and just throw a shell in there. And hope for the best. Another way you can do this, you can um, switch colors again if you want. You can skip these and go in the middle. All right, and just keep yourself going. Just keep moving. Okay. So now you're at the part where you have another hole. Hole. 
you are at another home, but this is your corner. So you're gonna yarn over right here, go into that big corner hole, and do a shell of double crochet. So double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, and then you're gonna chain two after that shell. So if you watched my previous video or done on basic granny square, you know this one. It's shell, chain, chain, shell. And this shell is only three double crochets. No treble crochets. This time we already have our nice squared off piece. So and then go into the next one, do yourself a double crochet. Just keep oops. There we go. Keep yourself moving. Almost nearing the end, at least for me. You can keep going if you want to. Make a giant blanket off this one little flower. Or you can maybe even the next time you make this, just not even start doing the green part. You can just go ahead and keep doing little flower petals. I think it would make a very cute hat. A flower petal hat, just in time for spring. Keep going. Okay. And your shell, of course, is three double crochets. So we're at another corner, so we're going to go ahead and do shell. Chain, chain, shell. Just keep moving. for watching my video. I really appreciate it. I have a lot of fun making these for you all. And I hope that your Granny Square Starburst Edition turns out excellent. Whether you chose different colors or a grading yarn that goes from one color to another, or a solid, I hope it turns out really good. I hope this crochet along with me video helped you. Sometimes it's fun to just crochet with someone and maybe learn something new. So we're at a corner. Just shell, chain, chain, shell. If you're crocheting with me and you haven't made it to the corner yet, it's totally fine. It's not a race. You will get fast. You will probably get even faster than me. Because I tend to get turned around sometimes. And right now, listening to the tea kettle, wondering if it's about to go off. Which I promise I will silence the video that point trying a lemon ginger tea tonight which always is 
good spring for me. I like lemon and ginger. I think a lot of people do. Or maybe those are the two worst things on the whole planet, and you can't even believe I just said that. In which case, I am very sorry. Chain, chain, oops, and then you get turned around, <laughs> don't do that, chain, chain, okay, and there you have it, your very last connecting, so you're going to go up three, one, two, three, you get it to fit, slip stitch your way involved. Okay, so we're gonna cut this bit off. Our scissors, do a little stretch with our fingers, and pull this guy all the way through. So, I'm gonna go ahead. Grab the end of this yarn, which I made super, super long for no reason other than um, it just happened that way. Pull through, pull through, okay. Kind of weave it in there. Don't hold too tight. You don't want it to be obvious where you left off. You want that magic of, oh my goodness, how did you do this? To last within your work. Okay. I'm going to go back up this way. Line right up this way. And here. Back and around this way again. And I think that's good. Just like that. I think I got a decent bit for that too. Could make like a crochet like a dog or something. With all these like stray knits of rainbow yarn. Wouldn't that be kind of fun? Yarn in, back down. Okay. And there you have it. I hope this video has found you well. And I am super glad to make it with you. Come back next time.